Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons again. Hope you're well. If you haven't been to Scott's Bass Lessons yet, make sure you go straight over there and check it out. There is tons of free lessons just like this. And if you sign up, you get the special toolkit as well, which has a load of subscriber-only tutorials in that you're going to love. Um, this week, we're going to look at another bass riff of the week. And this week's riff, I kind of wanted to teach... Um, some compositional techniques with it. So this is why, or, or how I actually came up with this riff. We're just using a few little techniques that you've probably heard before, but not, might not have used or used used um, to come up with your own riffs, okay? Now, if you want the tab and notation for this, just hit the link below this video. If on the website, hit the link below the video. And if you're on YouTube watching this, hit the link below the video. It'll take you to another page, follow the instructions, and then it will take you straight through to the toolkit area on scottsbasslessons.com where you'll be able to get, download all of the uh, tab and notation for all of the riff of the weeks, okay? So you get all of them and you get a whole bunch of other cool stuff as well. Okay, so th let's listen to the riff first, just without the backing track so we can hear what, the, uh, what it sounds like, okay? So, one, two, a three, a four. Now the first thing I should tell you is it's based on an E dominant seven arpeggio, okay? E dominant seven. Now arpeggios, you might have heard people talking about arpeggios and how you should use them on bass. Arpeggios on bass are just like chords on guitar, okay? So the, an arpeggio is exactly the same as a chord, except an arpeggio you play one note at a time, and a chord you play all the notes at the same time. So, for instance, if a guitar player didn't know his chords, that would be similar to a bass player not knowing their arpeggios, right? So this is why I'm always hammering on about learning your arpeggios on bass, using, using what they call chord tones, all right? So we can outline the chords, it's so important. Without knowing the chord tones and the arpeggios that you should be using over certain chords, over all the chords, it's like a guitar player um, not knowing the chords on his instrument or her instrument, should I say. So it's really important that we get into this, okay? So this riff is on an E dominant seven arpeggio. So the arpeggio is here. So that's root, major third, fifth, flat seven, and octave. It's also notes E, G flat, B, Okay, so they're the, the notes and the intervals from the E dominant seven arpeggio, okay? Now with this riff, I'm using those as the foundation and then I'm just adding some elements in. The first element of the riff that I'm adding, um, adding in is approach notes, chromatic approach notes. And guys such as James Jameson use this all the time. So let's view that arpeggio again and then I'm gonna show you how this works. So the arpeggio is here. And the first note of the riff is an E, right? Which is the root note. Two, three, four. And then we just do a chromatic run of three notes into the major third of the arpeggio, which is the second note of the arpeggio. So two, a three, four, a one, two. And then the same thing into the fifth. So a chromatic run into the fifth of the chord. Right from the top, two, a three, a four. And then we've got that seven there, that flat seven. We're gonna run down to that flat seven. Again, it's just three chromatic notes going down. We could do it up, but it sounds better for this kind in this kind of um, situation going down. 
here we go, a two, a three, a four. <laughs> And there, I'm sliding down and doing a little sting on that on that flat seven, and then ending that little phrase on there, and kind of there's a little little gliss. So two, a three, a four. So let's take that little section, okay? Two, a three, four. Ah, two, three, I'm clicking at the same time. Again, two, a three, four. Now this bit, guitar players play it all the time, I play it all the time. Um, it, all it is, in theory, okay, is a, that's the 13th of the chord, and we hit what, what is the minor third, okay, which is a, a flat three, which is the G, okay, but remember we're playing over an E7, but we're substituting that minor three there, which it comes from a blues scale. can use a flat three over your dominant seven arpeggios, even though the dominant, se dominant seven arpeggio has a, a natural three. It's just one of those little quirks of life, okay? Just gives it that bluesy sound. Okay, so that's where that comes from. So just that, that first part of the riff again, two, the three, four. Now this next bit, I'm starting exactly the same. Here's the major third of the E dominant seven. There it is there, G sharp. I'm just doing a run up three chromatic notes. Two. So again, that same concept, just a chromatic run to a chord tone. And then after I hit that, I just go down the E triad, okay? So, that's just an E triad. So, um, let me think about the fingering of that. Okay, so I'm just going two, three, four, up to the G sharp to one on the G string, and then I rotate over again with that first finger, and then with my little finger play the, uh, the G sharp, and then to the one, and then again I rotate down using that first finger, it's kind of, I'm kind of bridging them two, but I'm not doing this. Or it's not. I don't ever have two notes ringing into each other. Right down to that G sharp. And it's worth just looping that around so you can get the finger in. Two, three, four. Slow. Let's take the entire riff up to that point. Two, three, four. Okay, so now we've got from that G sharp, we go B, E, G sharp, A, and then we land on that A. And there I'm kind of implying the four chord of the E. And then we just go in octaves up to the E, but I'm going that kind of thing. 
So just a slide from C sharp to the D and then down D, A, D. Slide up to the E flat, E flat, B flat, E flat, E. Two, all of it. Four. Slow. Two, three, four. chromatic type of approach notes all over the place. Guys like James Jameson, Bob Bab, all the Motown guys did it. You can use the, these triadic ideas anyway, so anywhere. So if we're doing a groove in the key of D7, place and I went into a little blue scale kind of thing there as well you know just to throw that in there so hopefully you've enjoyed this week's bass riff of the week you're gonna week week bass riff of the week you're gonna hear it again at the end of this video if you want to get any of the tab or notation just hit the link below this video follow the instructions and it'll take you through to the toolkit area on scottsbasslessons.com where you can download all the goodies and other than that take it easy and I'll see you next week see you in the shed